All right. Um, so here is the remainder of lecture three about continuous functions. All right. So today we are going to cover the well, a number of topics, um, types of continuous functions, topological properties, and finally manifold. Okay, so we are going to begin with um, a homeomorphism. I, I defined it in class, but I, I didn't really uh, give you any examples, so it is probably um, worth to revisit the, this topic. Right? So uh, a homeomorphism uh, is a continuous function from a topological space to a topological space. So these x and y are topological spaces. And... Uh, the, this function is supposed to be bijective, continuous, and the inverse function is also continuous. And so this is a homeomorphism. Now, let us look at some examples. Uh, an open interval is homeomorphic to a straight line. I mean, we already saw this example in lecture one, but let me probably uh, to do it one more time. So and th 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 there are different ways to do it. So, for example, uh, ta tangent x, the function tangent x, uh, its domain is the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and its range is the whole real line, right? So it is um, an explicit homeomorphism from the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 to the real line. Or another example, uh, let's say the function, the logistic function f of x is 1 over 1 plus e to the minus x. The one that is widely used in artificial intelligence, right? So this is uh, a homeomorphism from the real line to the interval from 0 to 1. Okay? So an open interval is homeomorphic to a straight line. But also uh, a half open interval is homeomorphic to a half line. Uh, like, for example, so consider that this function f of x equals 1 over x. And um, let us re restrict its domain to the interval from um, 1 to infinity, right? So from 1 to infinity. Then if x goes from 1 to infinity, then 1 over x goes from uh, basically from 1 to 0, right? So the range of the dysfunction is going to be the open interval from 0 to, well, half open interval. So, um, Zero is not included, but one is included. Okay, so this is also a homeomorphism. So let me um, emphasize that they are all homeomorphisms. So they are continuous uh, and bijective. <coughs> all right, uh, but we can actually continue even further. Um, uh, let, let me show you how an open disk, an open disk, so d2, while x squared plus y squared is less than 1, is homeomorphic to, to the whole plane. Right? Basically, the idea is that you can represent uh, our open disk as a union of, um, um, as a combination of uh, half lines that um, initiating at the origin, right? So, and then there, there's going to be infinitely many um, open uh, half intervals, half open intervals, and we are going to apply our construction to every one of them, right? So it can be something like this. So um, basically, if we have our disk, suppose that it is open, um, a point on the disk is given in polar coordinates by R theta, where R is between 0 and 1, but it can be 0, but it is strictly smaller than 1, right? So we want to uh, map it to some other point uh, that can be an arbitrary point on the plane. Now, um, so our R is between 0 and 1, including 0, but not including 1, right? So, but uh, if we just, just do 1 over x, then, so if, if I just draw 1 over R, then um, it wouldn't work because 1 over r would be from 1 to infinity, but not including, I mean, since 0 is included, I cannot divide by 0, right? So I cannot take 1 over r, so I should take 1 over 1 minus r. All right, and if I just take 1 over 1 minus r, then 
the range is going to be from 1 to infinity rather than from 0 to infinity. So what I should do, I should subtract 1. See that. All right. And now this is an arbitrary point on the real line. So um, an open disk is homeomorphic to to the plane. And here is another example of something that a plane is homeomorphic to, a stereographic projection, right? So uh, you can see um, the picture here. So in stereographic projection, we take a sphere. And so this uh, point here from which we project, so the initial point of the projection, we call it N, like the North Pole. Right? And then when we take our sphere, so this is S2, so S2 minus our North Pole is homeomorphic to the whole plane. Um, and you, 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 you can see it on the picture, right? So in order to construct the dishomeomorphism, so we choose any point X on the sphere, uh, connect, so and then draw a straight line from N to X, and then just uh, see where that straight line intersects our plane and uh, that point on the plane is called f of x. So notice that on this picture uh, the plane is drawn so that uh, my sphere lies entirely on one side of the plane. It, it, it actually it doesn't have to be the case. So the plane can e even intersect the sphere and um, if you if you are going to work out the specific equations which is possible the easiest um, way to, well, the easiest kind of position of the plane relative to the sphere for which you can work out the equations is when the sphere is, well, we have like x, y, z, the sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 1, the unit sphere, and the plane is just, um, so the n, the north pole, is the, the, the point zero zero one. And the plane is just a OXY plane, given by the equation z equals 0. So this plane intersects our sphere, but it, it is OK. I mean, it doesn't mean that we cannot do it. So it just means that um, under this stereographic projection, the upper half of the plane of the sphere, so the upper half of the sphere uh, is mapped to kind of the exterior of the plane, and the lower half of the sphere is mapped to the unit disk um, that is a part of the plane that is inside the sphere. Okay, 